it's so easy sometimes to get focused on the here and the now and the chaos of this world. Um, I think it's easy to forget that Jesus is coming back for us. It's only a matter of time. And while we certainly have work to do in the meantime, there's a hope that we can stand on because Jesus keeps his promises. We're going to dive into that and some more of the color method today. Stay tuned. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what he says in his word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. And I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with him and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, before we get into today's episode, I have a quick word. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know, I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org. And for a limited time, I'm offering all of my podcast listeners a special discount of 20% off. You can use the discount code hearing Jesus that's one word all caps to get your discount there are also some free videos and a leader's guide for you to get started again head to shehears.org and you can find the bible study on the resources page hey friends welcome back to the hearing Jesus podcast I'm your host Rachel Grohl today we are picking up John chapter 20 verses 1 through 18 and I'm going to go ahead and read it for you and then we'll talk about the color method Early in the morning, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was moved away from the entrance. She ran at once to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, breathlessly panting. They took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciple left immediately for the tomb. They ran neck and neck. The other disciple got to the tomb first, outrunning Peter. Stooping to look in, he saw the pieces of linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Simon Peter arrived after him, entered the tomb, observed the linen cloth lying there, and the kerchief used to cover his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but separate, neatly folded by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who had gotten there first, went into the tomb, to took one look at the evidence, and believed. No one yet knew from the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The disciples then went back home. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she knelt and looked into the tomb and saw two angels sitting there, dressed in white, one at the head, the other at the foot of where Jesus' body had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why do you weep? They took my master, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. After she said this, she turned away and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to her, Woman, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? She, thinking that he was the gardener, said, Mister, if you took him, tell me where you put him so I can care for him. Jesus said, Mary. Turning to face him, she said in Hebrew, Rabbani, meaning teacher. Jesus said, Don't cling for me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them. I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, telling the news to the disciples. I saw the Master, and she told them everything he said to her. This was the message version that I'm using today. And again, if you haven't heard in the last two episodes, we're using a different version every day just to kind of change up up a little bit. And sometimes you get some varied perspective when you do that. 
this week we have been picking apart uh, day by day the color method of study and um, one of the things that we would be looking for throughout the week if, if you were doing the full Bible study would be the various elements of the narrative to help you with comprehension. So today we would be looking at numbers and I would recommend highlighting those in orange and again these colors are just the ones that I use or the ones I recommend in the Bible study but you can do it whatever you would like but if I were to pull out the numbers in this passage um, and we actually have quite a few of them sometimes we don't have any at all things that you would hear would be things like first one first two one and again um, me saying it like this doesn't have as much of an impact as if you were doing this yourself. But what this helps us to do is understand how many days, the timing, how many people were involved. Um, and there is a significance to numbers in lots of different places in scripture. So it helps you start getting into the habit of looking for that. But beyond that, there's a couple things I want to point out. I Again, my encouragement this week, this week is really all about helping you get into your own Bible so you can be doing this study on your own. But there was two things I wanted to mention uh, on this uh, day about Mary and maybe some things you picked up, maybe some things that you didn't. And again, I have mentioned this with all of the women that we've been studying. We want to be reading with a fresh perspective and see what the scripture says, not what we think. Many people over the years have considered um, Mary Magdalene to be somebody that she's not. They have, we talked about yesterday, they've considered her to be a prostitute. Some even would have considered her to be a romantic partner of Jesus. And there was a TV show, I think when I was a kid, that showed it that way. And I think it really messed a lot of people up. Um, not only is that ridiculous, but I want to kind of just show you it's ridiculous because of who Jesus is, but I want to show you why that makes no sense. You want to look at where the names are placed. And so because of the place of, of Mary Magdalene's name, when we see her mentioned with various groups of women, her name is first. And the way that the, the writers would delineate age would be that the oldest woman in the group of women would be listed first. So when we see her listed, she's always listed before Mary, the mother of Jesus. So essentially what we learn here is that Mary Magdalene was older than Mary, the mother of Jesus. She she could have even have been like a grandparent's age as far as her relationship with Jesus. So I think that's important to, to, to keep in mind. Another aspect of Mary that I love is the fact that she was a different kind of disciple than most of the rest. And we have talked about um, Mary of Bethany being a disciple. We know there were other women that were part of that disciple group. But Mary was a different kind of disciple. She followed him because he was literally her savior before he died. Now remember where we're at in this stage of things. Jesus is, yes, we're seeing in this passage, Jesus has died and resurrected now, but, but her relationship with him before he died, he was her savior. He had healed her and rescued her and delivered her. And although the men were likely drawn in because of his love, she responded to his healing. And the, the reason, one of the reasons that Jesus was so attractive to people in that age was because he was different. He loved people differently and he drew people in with his love. And once he drew people in with his love, he could get to their heart. And that's where the change happened with that authentic interaction with, with the heart of Jesus. People responded to his love. She not only responded to his love, she responded to his healing. And I believe his healing is an act of his love. There's another aspect but before I get to that, I just want to share, I myself have been the recipient of God's healing in my own life, as have my children. And um, I go into that in detail in the weekly wrap up. I think that'll post Saturday. I've also prayed for people that have received healing, both in the States and um, in other countries. And when people have been divinely healed of a physical ailment, their relationship with Jesus is never the same. 
And, and that's true for me too. I will never not believe. I've experienced it and I've seen other people experience it. When you've had divine healing, when you've had deliverance, when you have escaped the darkness, you will cling to the light. And so Jesus was her savior before he died. I think that's why she was at that tomb that day. I think that that's why she was the one that was there. There's another aspect, of, and yesterday I had encouraged you to start doing some cross-referencing and start reading about Mary Magdalene and other passages of scripture. If you missed it, or if you weren't able to find it on your own, there's one in Luke chapter 8 that I think is important. It gives us an aspect that I think is important to consider here. It's in verse 3. It says, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. This, um, this particular version doesn't mention her by name, but Mary was with this group of women that were traveling, that were helping to support the disciples and Jesus. And so Luke points out for us how the women supported Jesus with their own resources. And I think that's important for us to remember because it helps us understand that women not only had access to resources, but they used what they had to serve the Lord. I love that aspect, and sometimes that's overlooked, so I wanted to make sure I pointed that out. But really what I, where I want to kind of end up today and what I want you to meditate on is something that um, came up, I think, about halfway through our passage when it talks about the linen clothes. I'll read it again for you. It says, Simon Peter arrived after him, entered the tomb, observed the linen clothes lying there, and the kerchief he used to cover his head, not lying with linen clothes, but separate, neatly folded by itself. Um, one of the things that I have said over and over again is that it's really important to consider the original audience and the original text. And I don't know if you're like me, but when I have read that in the past, I thought, well, that's kind of weird. Why was it, number one, not with it? And number two, why was it neatly folded? And in the Jewish culture, you know, they had lots of um, feasts and celebrations, and it was part of their religious custom to have these feasts of Passover and all those kinds of things, wedding feasts, all of those. And the way that, um, that, that we can understand this is the host of the feast, whether it was a king or if it was just the, the owner of the house or the bride and the groom or whoever was the host of the feast, if they got up as they often would, to go visit with other guests or to go to the restroom or for any reason had to get up. And remember, a lot of these feasts would last for days. What would happen is if the host got up for any reason to go visit with guests or whatever reason he would get up, if he not wadded up the napkin and left it at his seat, then that meant that the servants could clear up his plate and he was done eating. He was done for the night. But if he neatly folded it, it sent a message to everyone around, including his servants. And that message was, I'll be back. I'm not finished. And so there's two things that we can understand. Yes, the work on the cross is the finished act of Jesus for our redemption and our salvation. It is a finished work. But he's coming back. And I think there is a hope that we often forget about, especially when we are living in these dark times. He's coming back. So my hope for you is that this week, or even this evening, that you would just resonate with that in your spirit, that you would recognize that he's coming back. It's just a matter of time. Lord God, I thank you for my friends that are listening today. I thank you that you are a God that cares so intimately about our details of our lives and that you have given us the treasure of your word. God, I pray for my friends that they would start to crave your word, crave it in abundance so that they would not even be satisfied, but they would just continually crave more of you and more of your word. Lord, help them to know who you are and to see the way that you reveal yourself as they continue to seek you. 
I thank you that you're coming back for us, that we are not left here alone in this world, that you have sent your spirit to accompany us and empower us to to do the good job that you've called us to do. God, I thank you for the way that you have used this podcast and continue to use it in the lives of my friends. I thank you and praise you in all things. Amen. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.